from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Imagine, nonprofit. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're actually on the waterfront in Seattle at the AWS Imagine nonprofit event. We are here a couple weeks ago for the uh, AWS Imagine education event. This is really about nonprofits and, and solving big, big problems. So, uh, Dave Levy and team have a, a, you know, are dedicated to some of these big problems, and one of the big problems in the world is human trafficking and problems with that people are encountering and all kinds of nasty situations all over the world, and we're really excited to have someone who's tackling that problem and really trying to bring a voice to those people who wouldn't otherwise have a voice. And she's Hind Ali Nawi, she's the CEO of Humanitarian Tracker. Hind, great to see you. Thank you, Jeff, good to be here. Absolutely, so before we jump into it, uh, impressions on this event. Wonderful event, bringing together uh, technologists, people in nonprofit, um, really creating synergies for people to collaborate and talk to each other and network and learn how they can advance their organizations. Such important work. Yes. And so, give us kind of the background on what you're up to, what Humanitarian Tracker is all about. So, Humanitarian Tracker is a nonprofit forum. It was created to connect and empower citizens using innovation and technology, but specifically for humanitarian events. We were among the first to combine crowdsourced reports with data mining and artificial intelligence and apply them to humanitarian disasters, conflicts, human rights violations, um, disease outbreak, all the way to tracking the UN Sustainable Development Goals, really giving a holistic view of what's happening. It's interesting, you know, it's probably like the, the, the Middle Eastern Spring, I can't remember the exact term that people mm. use, where it was kind of the first use of, of regular people using their mobile phones to kind of grab a groundswell uh, of action. You're not looking at the politics specifically, you're looking at more humanitarian disasters, but pretty amazing kind of what a, a connected phone represents to anyone in, anywhere in the world now to communicate what's happening to them, to share that story. We really didn't have anything like that before to get that personal event on the ground. No, it's really a new way of consuming, creating and consuming information. So the cell phone has really given people on the ground a chance to tell their own story, but it's not enough. If you have an event that happens to you, something happens to you, and you record it, it stops there. But the unique thing about humanitarian trackers is it gives people that forum to show the world and tell them what's happening to and around them. Right, but it's not just about the individual. And what you guys are doing is using cutting edge technology, obviously you're here as part of the AWS event in terms of machine learning and big data to grab a large number of these reported events and distill it into more of, a, of an overarching view of what's actually happening on the ground. How do you do that? Where did you get that vision? How are you executing that? Well, we're all about empowering the citizen. And in our line of work, we deal with a lot of data, a lot of information. Most of it is unstructured, most of it is crowdsourced. So we would use machine learning to help us extract important details, information on time, event, location, what is happening. At the same time, we really care that this re report reporter um, stays anonymous for their own safety. We, privacy and security is a utmost important to us, so that's always our focus. Um, so in that space, we de-identify them. We take out any information that could be um, identifiable, that could lead to, to their arrest, or could lead to somebody identifying that it was them right. that reported. And how do you get the information to the people that are suffering this, this activity on the ground? How do they know about you? How do they know that you are anonymizing their information, so there's not going to be repercussions if they're they report. You know, how to, it was kind of I guess your go to market uh, to steal a business terms, in making sure that people know this tool's available for help. It depends on the situation. So, for example, in the conflict situation, we rolled it out and we kept it low key for a while because we didn't want. Um, we didn't want government attacks, we didn't want people to be arrested or to be tried. So we rolled it out and it was word of mouth that spread and people started submitting reports. Actually the first, the first uh, project we did with conflict, we weren't sure if we were going to get one report, zero reports. The first week we got nothing. 
And then slowly as people learned about it, they started submitting their reports. And we see our job as really elevating the otherwise marginalized voice. So you submit a report to us, we then take it, we verify it, we make it public, and that we welcome, we encourage, we want people to consume it. Whether you're a student, whether you're a journalist, whether you're a government, whether you work in a nonprofit, the UN, um, it's been used to address human rights violations, it's been used to identify humanitarian hotspots. Um, the data is phenomenal and what you get from it is not just collecting data. We're not about just collecting the data. We want to make sure it's meaningful and we want to derive insights. So we want to know what is the data actually telling us. Right, right. So just to be clear for people that, that don't know, so you're making that data available. Yes. You're cleansing, you're cleansing the data. You're running some AI on it to try to get a bigger picture. And anyone with a login, any kind of journalist can now access that data in support of whatever issue or topic or story that they're chasing. That's it, Jeff. <laughs> That's phenomenal. And just kind of size and scope. You've been at this, I think you said, since 2011. You know, kind of how many active activities, crises, I don't know, um, what the definition is of a bucket of these of mm. these problems. Are, are you tracking historically at a given point in time? Give us some kind of basic sizing uh, type of dimensions. It really ranges because we could, when we were tracking conflict, for example, we were really focused on one area and the surrounding countries because you had a refugee population, you had displacement, you had all sorts of issues, but it could be anywhere from five projects. Um, it just depends. And we want to make sure that each project we're taking on, we're giving it our full, um, full attention, full scope, and I like to run the organization like a two-team pizza team, and so I don't take on more than I could handle. Right, right. So then how did it morph from the conflict to the, to the global sustainability goal? So we've worked with Western Digital, they're doing a lot of work, SAP is doing a lot of work on kind of these global sustainability goals. How did you get involved in that, and how did the two kind of dovetail together? So the elasticity of the cloud has helped our our operation scale tremendously um, and in 2016 we were selected as a top 10 global innovation that could be applied to the sustainable development goals and so they found you the UN find you or you get nominated how did that happen we were nominated and from over a thousand solutions we were chosen congratulations thank you uh, we were showcased at the solutions summit which is hosted at the United Nations and just based on that experience of meeting people that were doing really cool things in their respective communities, we launched the Global Action Mosaic because we wanted to create one place where people that are doing projects in their communities could submit it and have it showcased. And the goals are not only to crowdsource the SDGs, but also be part of the effort to track what's happening, who's doing what where, make it easy for people to search, say, Jeff, you decided to get involved in a project with education. You can go on to our Global Action Mosaic, search projects on education in your community or in other parts of the world, and then get involved with it. So it's really kind of creating a centralized place where people can get information on the global goals. Awesome, so that's pretty much the, the Global Action Mosaic is pretty much focused on the UN global goals versus your core, your core efforts around the humanitarian tracker. Yes. That's great. So. Um, we're here at AWS. Have you always been on AWS? Is this something new? How does being on kind of the AWS infrastructure help you do your mission better? We are, we've been partners in running on AWS since we actually started. Since the beginning? Yes. Um, we have uh, Yushahidi as one of our partners, development partners, AWS, and because one of the core one of the most important things to us is privacy and security. We want to make sure that whatever data is being handled and received um, is stored securely. Right, and right. that information transmitted, handled, is also being done so in a, in a secure way. Um, like I mentioned, the elasticity of the cloud has helped us scale our mission tremendously. Um, it's affordable, we've been able to use it, we use their machine learning stack to de-identify um, some of the data that comes in. So we're 
firm believers that AWS is essential to how we run our operation. Because do the individual conflicts kind of grow and shrink um, over time? Do you, do you see it's, it's really a collection of, of kind of firing up hotspots and then turning down versus kind of one long, sustained, relatively flat, from kind of utilization yeah. and capacity point of view? No, it definitely, it flares up and, and you'll have like a year, months, weeks sometimes where it's just focused on one area. But one of the things that we focus on is not just, so what is the data actually telling us? So if you say you're focusing on point A, but just down the street, um, in location B, there is a, a dire humanitarian emergency that needs to be addressed. Um, the crowdsourced reports combined with the data mining and the AI helps us identify those hotspots. Right. So everybody might be focused here, but there could be an emergency just down the street um, that needs to be addressed as well. So it just depends. And do you have your own data scientists or do you, do other people take your data and run it through their own uh, processes to try to find some of these insights? We have both. You have both? Yeah. So what's been the biggest surprise when you when you anonymize and aggregate the data around some of these hotspots? Is there a particular pattern that you see over and over? Is there some you know, insight that now that you've seen so much of it from kind of the catbird seed that you can share and reflect on? I think it's very unique to each project you do. But there is one thing that um, I strongly support that I don't see enough of, and that's the sharing of data within the organizations. So for example, just getting to that culture where um, sharing your data between organizations is encouraged and actually done um, could, help, could help create a, um, create a pool of knowledge. So for example, we worked with 13 different organizations that were all tackling humanitarian um, events, the same one in Syria. And the 13 did not share data and did not talk to each other. And so we found that, for example, they were all focused on one area when just a few miles down, there was a need that wasn't being addressed, but because they don't share information, they had no idea. Right. It was only when we were able to take a look at it, um, kind of from the um, from an overarching view, looking all their data, that we were able to say, you know, it would be helpful. It would actually, you could um, save on resources and less time and less effort. And you guys are tackling a small funding pool to begin with if you shared information and tackled different things instead of focusing on one area because you don't know what the other guy is doing. Right. And were they, and were they using crowdsourced data as their source data or were they just, were they trying to collect their own from the they field? They were collecting their own. So I assume the, the, the depth and richness and broadness of, of data was probably nothing like you were collecting. Well, you get a different kind of uh, you get different kind of information when the individual is actually telling you what's happening right, versus right. you asking um, a very direct question like you know, are you healthy? Right, yes or no. Right. Whereas um, you give them the chance, they might tell you that um, they haven't eaten and they're diabetic and um, you know, give you other. Other, other pieces of information, where they're living, are they refugees, um, are they healthy, are they not healthy, do they go to school, do their kids go to school, how many kids they have, are they um, female run household, all this information uh, could help guide development in the proper way. Right, right. All right, so I'll give you the final word, how should people uh, get involved if they want to help? You can go to humanitariantracker.org if you want to volunteer with us. And if you're doing a project that is related to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, I would like you to go to globalactionmosaic.org and map it there and be part of our community. Excellent. Well, Hen, well, thank you for, uh, for taking a few minutes to share your story and for all the good work that you're doing out there. Thank you, Jeff. It was a pleasure. All right. She's Hen. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at AWS Imagine Nonprofit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.